Hi, you're watching the Los Angeles Times Envelope's Emmy Contenders Chats. I'm Michael Ordonia. You may have seen today's guest in American Sniper, the Fifty Shades movies, the Magnificent Seven remake, and or HBO's True Blood. Now the second season of his Paramount Network series Yellowstone premieres June 19, and they're already about to start production on season three. It's Luke Grimes. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for dropping by. Of course. And uh, thanks for uh, liking the right Paul Thomas Anderson movies. Exactly. You yeah. guys missed it. We like the same one. The, the favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie being? Punch Drunk Love. There you go. Punch Makes me Drunk. trust this guy. <laughs> you poor, poor man. <laughs> uh, all right. So you're, you're in Yellowstone, the Paramount Network series. I'm just going to give a very quick recap, and I want you to tell me what we need to know that I didn't say. Okay. All right. So Yellowstone is set on a ranch in modern-day Montana. Yep. Kevin Costner plays John Dutton, who's the patriarch of the Dutton clan. Um, they're trying to protect their ranching empire from many different kinds of competition. And the family does some very bad things to hold on to what they have. Sure. Um, you play Casey, who is sort of the, uh, the chosen one, um, his dad's favorite. But you're also sort of a wayward son, grew up on the ranch, became a Navy SEAL, mm -hmm. and then defied your father to marry the woman you love. Yeah. And now the tension for you seems to be providing for your family, dealing with PTSD, mm -hmm. and uh, not getting drawn too much into your family schemes while supporting it. Okay, what did I miss? I think you covered it. Yeah, that's, that's End pretty of much the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what, what is the show about for people who haven't seen it, apart from that summary? Uh, it's, you know, it's a family drama. Um, at its core, and I think, you know, we all love that because we can all relate, you know. Uh, also, it's kind of an American story that's as old as uh, how this country uh, was founded in the, in the way that it is now, which is a lot of people fighting over a really beautiful place. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the things that sort of come out of people, the good, the bad, and, and, and all the ugly that happens when you have this sort of human messiness of, of people trying to get what they want and uh, and fighting for a way of life that they you know believe they deserve and and uh, that's what kind of drew me into the project was just seeing that there there really at the end of the day was no good guy or bad guy in this story you know um, and especially with Casey who doesn't really even know what he's fighting for at this point or, or what team he should be on that's uh, interesting that you put it that way I hadn't thought of that that he's a little a little confused about what team he's on. Right. Well, you know, he's got his family that he, you know, loves and, and, and is tied to. And then his family that he created with a, a Native American woman who lives on the reservation, he sees that way of life and what's happened to them and, and feels very connected to that as well. And, mm -hmm. and sort of that internal struggle with, uh, you know, where does he belong and all of that. And, uh, some, and the guilt and the shame of sort of uh, being on both sides. And that uh, being affiliated with that tribe brings them into direct conflict with the family because the tribe is in conflict with the family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you see that a lot in season one and uh, and in season two, you, you confront, he has to confront that feeling a lot more, sort of, uh, you know, make a lot more decisions about uh, who he is and what he stands for and, and, and which side of the lines he's going to be on. In season two, they, they really delve into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they set that up in season one where he's definitely, I mean, he's, he makes some decisions that are going to force him into direct conflict. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And even just acting that stuff, you know, you kind of, you're like, man, it, you know, it, between a rock and a hard place, you know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's actually kind of nice to sto sort of feel like he's uh, going one way or the other and making, you know, making some choices because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it'd be a hard place to, to, to live. Those, uh, those tribal issues are the kind of thing that I think in the hands of another writer-director might feel sort of uh, shoehorned in or token. Sure. But Taylor Sheridan, uh, this, th this show is... Uh, written and directed, created by Taylor Sheridan, who made Wind River, and he wrote Hell or High Water and uh, Sicario. The, it feels bona fide. It feels like he's put some thought into it, and uh, the people on each side are realized. They're, yeah. 
Yeah, he, he's gone to great lengths to make sure that that is the case and that these people are, uh, you know, represented well. And um, there, there are people on the show whose job it is just to make sure that there's nothing out of line, nothing, you know, stepping on anyone's toes to make sure that the, the voice of Native American people is, is, is really realized. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a lot of respect for that. And it's something that he really cares for as a person, you can tell, you know. He, uh, he works with a lot of nonprofits and things that help uh, the Native people, you know, try to get back the rights that were taken from them a long time ago. And they've had it hard, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I'm glad that at least part of our show is, is dedicated to kind of giving them a voice. Yeah. Well, you could tell that from Wind River, that he, he takes it seriously. He's not, oh, yeah. he's not a tourist. Yeah. yeah, this isn't like, you know, white guy saves the world stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is not, not white savior time. No, no. Your character is not, not white savior time, although he, he, does some, uh, he does some saving. He tries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, before I knew that this was Sheridan's work, and as you can tell, I, I respect him. Yeah. Just listening to the description of the show, that it was uh, a ranching family sort of defending its empire, I expected something soapy along the lines of Dynasty or Dallas, but set on a ranch in, in Montana. Sure. You know, rich folks fighting rich folks for whatever. Dallas. Yeah. Can I be in that show? That <laughs> sounds <know>. fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the hairdos would be a lot different. <laughs> yeah. But watching it, it's just nothing like that at all. And yeah. um, as you were saying, that there are a lot of gray areas. People, no, no firm good guys, no firm bad guys, except your wife is pretty much a good guy. Yeah. Good gal. And a badass. Yeah. She's awesome. Uh, so what I ended up feeling the show was more like, uh, in comparison to, not derivative of, was the godfather, like the godfather on a ranch. Huh, yeah. Because your family's, they're a full-on crime family at times. Mm -hmm. You order murders and... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you're sort of the Michael Corleone figure. Huh. Yeah, good Hadn't job. Th Hadn't <laughs> no, it's it's actually been uh, spoken about. Oh, has it? And uh, yeah, actually, I, I had I went back and rewatched all the Godfathers um, before the second season because that sort of became like a. I think you know, through the process of making the first season, we all sort of started to realize that. Ah. And uh, those are some good movies, man. Oh man. Oh, oh man. Oh, man are the they first good. two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's that's where the sort of TV show of it all comes in. You know, as much you know, as much as you want to make something that's like as true as possible. You know, slice of life. The exciting part of the show is this sort of like crime element, of, and it takes it a little outside. Uh, you know, the, the, it's the fantasy element that I think people kind of can hang on to. When, you know, well, I I had the pleasure of interviewing Kevin Costner about this, and. One thing that he pointed out, actually, when we were talking about Highwaymen, was that uh, there's a realism to that violence, and there's there are consequences in this. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah, it's sort of a fantasy element. Whenever we talk about uh, sort of mafia level crime, sure, um, but there are consequences for everything. For the you know something you do early in in season one, this it haunts the rest of the show. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I I've actually wondered what it is about us as humans and me personally about like what, what why we are attracted to that sort of thing and, and especially as Americans like this you know violence and and I and why people want to watch something that they would never actually do in their real life yeah. all I know is that I love reading these scripts and when I read something like that it's very exciting to to want to play um, but as far as like I, 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 I don't understand why that's so attractive but it is <laughs> Yeah, maybe because it's uh, an outlet. It's venting, as you say. It's something that hopefully most of us would never want to do in real life. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what that's why people get into to things like storytelling and acting in the first place. You know, you want to kind of experience things uh, in, in a way where it's uh, you can kind of live vicariously through something without actually uh, having to deal with the consequences in real life. <laughs> This is as close as I'm going to get, uh, you know. Well, you hope. <laughs> oh, absolutely, no, <laughs> that I will. <laughs> okay, so uh, another thing that, that came out of speaking with Kevin Costner about the show was that he didn't know early on just how far I into what's, what we'll call the dark side. Sure. His family and he would go. When were you aware of how, how far they go? 
Well, if you read those first three episodes, I mean, even if you watch them, those first three episodes, Casey's already pretty dark. Mm -hmm. And he's gotten better since. Like, the first three, I think he killed a person in each episode. I think, yeah, he killed uh, Monica's brother. Yeah. And then he killed... Uh, Spoiler alert. The, the, uh, oh, sorry if you have... <laughs> no, you, by now you must... The meth head guy that his trailer blew up. Yeah, yeah. And then the... Oh, and two guys in episode two or three, the, the rapist guys in the van. Yeah. So he was already, like, off the rail. <laughs> well, but I was like, this is going to be interesting. He but just, the, the meth head guy, that was an act of mercy. Sure, yeah. sure. Still killing a person, though. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, was, it was already pretty dark. <laughs> a guy was in a meth lab that blew up, and he was, like, begging for death, yeah. basically. I think, uh, you know, that, that was all kind of to show, uh, Taylor was trying to show how sort of lawless and, and unfair reservations are. Mm. And that uh, they go unchecked, and they're not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not what we're used to in, in our society. On these reservations, things are a, a little bit more... Uh, wild and and uh, not and not paid attention to, and I think that that stuff with Casey there was supposed to show like how um, like what danger they're in just living there, mm -hmm. and what a fish out of water he was, uh, you know, having belonged to this really wealthy uh, family, and 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 growing up in this way, and then moving over here and realizing that he's he's in trouble. Uh, it mentioning that he kills some folks, uh, but he's had experiences in war that have deeply affected him. Um, he, each of those instances of him killing people, he had a moment to think about it, like killing Monica's brother, he knew that that was gonna happen if, she, if he didn't surrender or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder if for Casey, those are moments of particular pain, like it, it's hurting him to, to do this thing that he was trying to get away from. Yeah, I think um, another thing that that stuff is supposed to sort of uh, showcase about what's going on with him is is this the PTSD you were talking about and, mm -hmm. and, and having been at war and how sometimes these guys come back from these experiences that are are horrendous and no one should have to go through and now are trying to fit into a, a normal civilized world. Mm -hmm and still feel like maybe this this killer, this monster that they were taught to be in, in another place. And I think Casey sort of, uh, he, that's where he's at. He's just, you know, feels like no matter where he goes in that first season, death is sort of following him around and uh, and, and just sort of the nightmare of, of, of who you have to become to fight a war, you know? And uh, I think that that's there to kind of try to get the audience in the mindset of, of, of where he's at. And, um, you know, uh, it, one of my favorite things about what hap what's happening in season two is him kind of confronting all of that mm. and uh, kind of taking a look at, at, at that stuff and, and trying to actually become uh, a, a human in a civilized world again. I want to see season two now. <laughs> they weren't available yet. I'll, I'll, I'll watch them. Uh, do that because that is interesting. You said the the person you have to become to fight in war, and I think for a lot of people that the tension is: Do I try to shed that person and and uh, revert to whom I was before, or do I accept that that is part of me now? Right. You know, all I can say to that is: Obviously, I've never fought in a war. I'm not. I don't pretend to know what that's actually like, but I've talked to a lot of guys who have. Mm -hmm. And in part of the research of, of this character and, in a, and the character I played in American Sniper, similar in that way, I've talked to a lot of guys who have been there and done that, and, uh, and I just I tried my best to, to reflect what I saw in them. Um, and that, that's as far as I can take that. I mean. It, I have so much respect for anyone who's served for their country and fought for what they thought was right, and mm. and so much love and respect for that. Did you get any uh, particularly helpful guidance from Sheridan on your role, and what what direction did he put you in? Um, yeah, he, you know, he was really hands-on, which I, I was surprised by, 
mainly because he had so much to do. That first season he wrote and directed every episode yeah, single-handedly, which is unheard of, it's, mm. you know. Um, and he would call me uh, every couple weeks and just say, here's where I'm thinking the character's going, just so you know, and, and kind of like plot me out, you know, because he, he, he started as an actor. So he knows how it kind of works for us, and, and especially in the TV world, it's very different than films. In a film, you, you have the whole story. Mm -hmm. Getting in, you know what you're gonna do, so you can kind of plot out where you are on that journey, and in TV, you don't have that luxury. You kind of, the writing is as, as they go, and uh, you're, you're a par as part of the audience as the audience is, because you're kind of watching this thing unfold as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he was very good about trying to like let us know uh, where we were headed and you know give us as much leeway as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I should, I should think that approach is better for an actor because you can it'll color your portrayal. It'll color every line reading. Absolutely. I mean, you you, you know, it's one of those things. You'd like to know if you know, in season four, something comes out where you're uh, you've been hiding something this whole time. Like. <laughs> Yeah, well, I wish I would have known that. I could have played that a little bit, but you know. Right. But um, I was in love with her the whole time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But there is an element of that that's pretty exciting uh, that I'm finding. I, I've never done a a TV series for this long before. I, like you said, I was in True Blood, but like a few episodes. You know, I've never done like a uh, episodic for for seasons, and it's kind of been fun in that way. I, I didn't like it at first, and now I'm kind of getting into it. I'm mm -hmm. like, so where am I going? What is going to happen? You know? Probably helps to have that, those scripts. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Rather than doing the same thing over and over again, he's actually going smart. <clears throat> but uh, can you share something that, uh, I don't know, in your preparation or in Sheridan's direction to you that really opened up who Casey is for you, made you understand him? Yeah, it's, I mean, the first, the first, first script that I got, which, you know, was for auditioning purposes, mm -hmm. and I just read, I, I felt like I understood that guy down to the ground. Like, I just really connected with Casey and thought, man, if I don't get to play this, and it's rare this happens, like, if I don't get to play this guy, I'm going to be heartbroken. Oh. Yeah, I like, I fell in love with the story, the family, and most of all with, with with Casey, I don't know what it was, and I just, I was like, I'm gonna do everything I can to try to get this because I'm, I love this guy. Mm. And thank God, mm -hmm. I got to do it, you know. Uh, well, speaking of things you had to do for it, uh, you grew up in Dayton, Ohio? That's right. You've played Cowboys a few times. Yeah. So, where does that come from? I mean, in this show, you have to show a lot of know-how, a lot of ranch know-how. People always ask, like, does growing up in Ohio kind of inform any of this Montana Dang. guy stuff? No, it doesn't, actually. My, my dad's a pastor. I grew up uh -huh. in a suburb. Uh, but I did grow up, like, hunting and, and, you know, I always say it's just I grew up around people of the earth, you mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, not, not city people, not uh, society people. I grew up with people that like to go outside and do stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that informs this character. Uh, being from middle America and all the Americana of the story informs the character. But other than that, all the cowboy stuff is new, you know? And it's been a blast to learn. I, I love it. I absolutely love going up there and getting on horses every day and throwing a rope around and yeah. being a goofball. It's fun. Yeah, you guys have some good advisors because the people who are supposed to look good as ranchers look good. <laughs> well, some of them are. You know, a lot, a lot of those guys that are sort of like on the ranch in the, in the background, they're real cowboys. They're the ones teaching us to ride in between scenes. <laughs> and then we go up there and say lines and, you know, it's just so funny. We always make a joke about that. Like, we pretend to do the cowboy shit and they're actually doing it. You know? yeah, yeah, I knew how to do that all along. <laughs> uh, got to ask you about Costner. Yeah. Because um, I, I have had the, the pleasure of speaking a few times and every time I find him to be really serious about his craft. I, I think that he is dedicated to story and storytelling. Yeah. Um, so how has he affected you? How is it, uh, you're, I mean, you've been around for a little while, but you're still a relatively young actor, especially sure. compared to somebody of his experience. Absolutely. So how has working with him and, and seeing his focus and his approach affected you? I've said from day one, like working with Kevin, uh, 
has been a good experience just to see someone who has been doing it as long as him, who's had, you know, every, every opportunity in the world as far as like, you know, being from like the golden era of the 90s and film and just doing all these amazing things and now doing his first series and still having a level of passion mm -hmm. that you would imagine he's always had. You know, the, 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 it's not like he's kind of phoning it in mm -hmm. to do this show. He, he, he came to work and it's very obvious that he really cares about portraying John Dutton in the right way. Mm -hmm. and, and he brings a lot of energy and, and that's been really inspiring to go, you know, I hope that I, if I'm ever in his position and have a career that long and that amazing, can still love the work as much as, as he does. I mean, he directed Dances with Wolves when he was younger than I am now mm -hmm. and won an Academy Award for directing. <laughs> you know, like, that guy, that that guy could have okay. given up and phoned it in a long <laughs> time ago, and he still loves it, and that's really inspiring. So can you think of anything he said or did on the set that, that uh, stuck with you, that showed you something or, or made you see things in a different way? I'll just say that every time I've had a scene with him, uh, every, you know, any time I've shown up to work and have seen, he is trying up until the last second before we start saying lines to, to dive deeper and find more within that scene. Hmm. And uh, that's been really cool to witness. You know, um, you don't get that a lot uh, hmm. with, with younger, older, less experienced, more experienced actors. And, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's a nice thing to see. You know, he's always trying to find a new moment, trying to really, you know, juice the scene for all it's worth. That's been really cool. It's hard to imagine him phoning it in. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, last thing about Yellowstone before I hit you with a lightning round. Oh. Uh, can you point to the most fun thing about the show? The thing that makes you happiest about it? The thing that makes me happiest is also the thing that's the most frustrating, and that's the horses. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I've loved learning. I've loved, you know, they taught me uh, some different disciplines. I didn't realize how much there was to this uh, horse riding world until now, and I'm really loving it and getting into it. But at the same time, some days, the horse that you loved the day before can be an asshole, and that's <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> So yeah, my, my uh, love slash hate relationship with horses. All right, here comes the lightning round. All right, let's do get, it. Get ready. And I'm supposed to look over here for this. Yes, right? okay. yes, in there. Um, what's the last show you binge watched? Game of Thrones. I started it in February of this year, and I've caught up, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here with everyone <laughs> for this last season, yeah. Well, I, I hope that means you liked it. I've been loving it. Okay. Yeah, I get, I get it. I get why everyone's addicted to it. Right. Uh, what classic TV show do you wish you could have been on? Classic TV show. Does Sopranos count yeah. as classic? Yeah. I mean, that was sort of the first show of like the golden era of what we see now as what television can be, right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that show's amazing. Sopranos. It's definitely a, a, a an everything changing show. It changed expectations of what TV could be. Absolutely, yeah. All right, what's the worst job you ever had? Doesn't have to be an acting job. Just the job that you're really glad you don't have anymore. Oh, dude, I've had so many bad jobs. The, wor the worst job I've had was probably, I worked in the stock room at The Gap, and that was, I mean, literally, and I was in a back room folding t-shirts for like eight hours a day. And then when I moved to LA, one of the jobs I had was working in a plumbing store. So I always say, I clean toilets, but they were display toilets. <laughs> there you go. So. Not as bad. <laughs> Um, okay, is there a show, past or present, that you think should have gotten more Emmy love? Uh, hmm. More Emmy love? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe another way of putting it is a show you think is, um, un... That didn't get the critical acclaim yeah, that, yeah. It, that it deserved. That's a really good question. I'm trying to think, you know, honestly, the only dramatic TV shows I've ever seen all of are The Sopranos. Breaking Bad, now Game of Thrones. And they all got lots of Emmy love. And they got a lot of love. So that's, that's all I know, guys. Sorry. Anyway, you've answered all our questions. Thanks for coming in, and congratulations on Yellowstone entering its third season before the second season even is up. Thanks, man. Hey, so nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Yeah.
To see this entire interview and other Emmy Contenders chats, please go to latimes.com.